Hey, what's up? It's John from Coding Attic, and welcome to another HTML and CSS Nuggets video. And in this video, I want to cover some exciting CSS Flexbox news. So if you're not a hipster, basically old timer like me, you probably still use CSS Flexbox for straight up horizontal layouts. So if I were to have a nav with some logo, with some honored list, with links, and essentially, if I want to set up a decent looking nav bar, I'm going to use a flex box. We're back in style CSS. Of course, I'm going to apply a little bit of styling to my logo. Then I'll also target the nav, add some height, add some background. And then for the children, I'm going to go with display flex and then align items in the center. So I'll set them up vertically in the center. And then I'll add justify content space between. So essentially, I'll set up some space between the logo and then the list. And then for the list, I'm going to go with display flex, and I'll add a little bit of styling. And then if I want to have a little bit of distance in between the items, I need to go to my nav link. So essentially a class that I have on the item, and then go with margin left or right. So in this case, I'm going to go with left and then 0 0.5 REMs. And this definitely works. But you probably agree that it feels a little bit hacky. Where essentially we have the Flexbox container, so essentially a parent, but we're setting up the distance in between the items by targeting the item and then using the margin. So the good news is that CSS Flexbox supports a gap property, something that we could use only in the CSS grid prior to this. And effectively, the way it works is following where I can go to my container and just go with my gap property. And then I can provide two values. One is going to be the distance between the rows. And the second one is going to be distance between the columns. Now, in my first example, I'll set zero for my rows. And we'll cover that in a second. But if I want to set some distance in between the columns, I simply need to provide my value. And in this case, I'm going to go back to my 0 0.5. And now check it out. Of course, everything works. So essentially, we don't need to use this hack anymore where we're targeting the item. And just to showcase how we can use the first value as well, I'll quickly set up my HTML with some boxes and I'll go over the code in a second. Don't worry about it. So where I have the nav, I'll just copy and paste where I have the div with some boxes and then each box as the box class as well as box one, two, three and four. And essentially, this is just used to add some background. And now let me head back to my utils. And essentially, I'll just grab the CSS code as well. So back in style CSS, I'll copy and paste. And you'll notice that we have four boxes. And then as far as the container, I just added a border all around, add a little bit of margin. And then for every box, there's a width and height. And then like I said, each box also has this unique class, whether that's box one, all the way to box four. And then I'm just adding some background color. And essentially, we again can go with container, then we set up display flex. In this case, I go with flex wrap. So essentially, if there's not enough space, then we'll just wrap to a new line. And if I want to have some distance in between the items, instead of targeting the item and then adding that margin, we simply go here with our gap. And then in this case, I'm going to go with one REMs that is going to be between the rows and then two REMs between the columns. And check it out. The moment we save, of course, now I have that distance in between. And then once I get to the screen size where I can have the two items plus whatever gap I set up, then of course, they're going to be in one line. And while we're still on the topic of CSS Flexbox, I also want to mention that Google Chrome now has introduced a nice CSS Flexbox inspector, including the editor. So let me showcase that in action. So if you're using Google Chrome, you can simply go to your developer tools and you'll notice that for every Flexbox container, you have this nice little icon. And essentially, as you're hovering over it, gives you a nice visual representation of the parent as well as the actual children. And the second thing, the editor is, in my opinion, even cooler, where if I go to my container, notice I have, of course, the selection, but check out this editor. 
this little icon right next to it. I can click on it and I can set up the flexbox styles on fly. So what that means is here I can change the direction. So if I don't want my row, I can go to the column. Then if I don't want it wrapped, then of course I can set it equal to no wrap. Then if I want to change my justify content, well, simply change these values around and notice how these styles are changing on a fly. So I don't have to test them out in the actual CSS. I can set it up here. And then if I like the styles, then I can just copy and paste. And of course, the same is going to work with align items as well. That should do it for the video. Just remember, CSS Flexbox supports gap property. And if you want to test out some CSS Flexbox styles on the fly, just look for Google Chrome browser.